Hi everybody, it's Miss Buchanan and I'm gonna be doing a read aloud today of the Lorax by Dr. Seuss. This is one of my absolute favorite Dr. Seuss books. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever sing expecting old crows is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old onceler still lives there. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the onceler, don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkin' on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkin' cold under the roof where he makes his own clothes out of myth mustard moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out one of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells you how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay. On the end of the rope, he lets down a tin pail and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail in the shell of a great, great, great grandfather's nail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you've paid him away in his snuff, the secret strange hole in his grovulous glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone. There's Knox. For the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. Knox, come here. Slup, down slups the whisper my phone to your ear and the old Winsler's whispers are not very clear since they have come down through the snorkely hose and he sounds as if he has smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swami swans rang out in space, one morning I came to this glorious place. And I first saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile, mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees, I saw brown barbalutes frisking about in their barbalute suits as they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. From the ripulous pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these with a touch of their tufts with much softer than silk, or was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what to do. I unloaded my cart. The Wenzlers. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffula tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and with speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a sneed. An instant, the instant I finished, I heard a gazump. I looked and I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I'd chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him, that's hard, I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. He spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I'm the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for trees have no tongues, and I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed, what is that thing you've made out of my truffula tuft? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree, I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful, this thing is a thneed. A thneed finds something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat, but it has other uses, yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers, for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool's need. 
But the very next minute I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute a chap came along, and he thought about that need, or he thought that the need I had knitted was great, and he happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor silly guy. You never can tell what people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him, be quiet if you please. I rushed across the room in no time at all, built a radio phone, I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wensler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Niche. Turn up the Weehawken and sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wensler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting threads, just as busy as bees, to the sounds of trap, to chopping of trapula trees. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked all off four trapula trees at one smacker. We were making needs four times as fast as before, and the Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked at my new office door. He snapped, I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots who play in the shade in their barbaloot suits and happily lived eating trefula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruit to go round, and my poor barbaloots are getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. You look so sad. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the Wensler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm. I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory. I biggered my roads. I biggered my wagons. I biggered the loads of needs I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went on biggering, selling more needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes. That old nuisance Lorax came up with more gripes. <coughs> I am the Lorax. He coughed and he whipped. He sneezed and he snuffed and he snarled and sniffed. One slur, he cried with a cruffulous croak. One slur, you're making such a smogulous smoke. My poor swami swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so, <coughs> And the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may fly for a month or a year to escape the smog that you've smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax. His dander was up. Let me say a few words about your gluppity glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making gluppity glup and also schloppity schlop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old Wetzler man, you. You're glumping the pond where the hummingfish humped. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future's so dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more truffula trees into needs, which everyone, everyone needs. Oh, well, that's gonna work out for him. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From the outside of the field came a sickening smack of an ax on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffula tree of them all. No more trees, no more needs, no more work to be done. So in no time, 
my aunts, uncles, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and they drove away under the smoke smuggered stars. And all that was left beneath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of the place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a pile of rocks with one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I couldn't guess. That was long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. You can see it says unless right there. But now, said the onceler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you, who cares a whole awful lot, nothing is gonna get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the onceler. He let something fall. It's the truffulous seed, the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffula seeds, and the truffula trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula, treat it with care, give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. And that feeling, so we'll have to kind of make a prediction if we think that the Lorax will come back. I hope you guys enjoyed reading The Lorax by Dr. Seuss with me. I know I loved reading it with you guys, and I'll see you in my next read aloud. Bye!